What's happened to you? And at this point in my life, well, I, yani, I've been gifted, yani, alhamdulillah, by Allah, with um, yani, cancer throughout my body. And um, yani, I've changed my whole life to sort of helping me. Why do you call it a gift? Yeah. And alhamdulillah, it's, it's a gift because um, What has having cancer, what has it opened your eyes to? Yeah, it's everything in life, and even, even the and smallest gift, like uh, and breathing fresh air. Do you feel like you used to take that for granted before? How long have you had cancer? Four months. Ali was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and given only seven months to live. Upon finding the news, he immediately sold his successful business and was forced to reconsider the lavish lifestyle he was accustomed to. Everything was to change. Ali, what was your reaction when you came to know you had cancer? I got rid of my cars. I got rid of my watches, even my clothes, I took them with me out of the season, I gave them to a lot of people. Yeah. I wanted to try to leave this world without you. So you were on a mission to get rid of your dunya. It wasn't until Ali invited us into his room that we truly understood the luxurious lifestyle that he was living and the extent of the sacrifice that he was making. What's all this, Ali? Talk to me, explain That's a bracelet, yani. Cost about 60,000. 60,000 60, dollars? Yeah. What do you have in these boxes, like? They're all my shoes. All Louis Vuitton. All Louis Vuitton. How much is something like this one? They're probably about 1,300. How much you pay for that, Ali? 700. Thanks. Okay, thanks, yeah. So what's happening with the sunglasses? Yeah. It's like collecting The organization wasted no time in the construction of a masjid and a school in Africa to serve as an ongoing charity for him when he finally has to depart this world. Well, it all started from when I was... I went to the cemetery when a brother that has the same... that has cancer passed away. And I was at the cemetery and I was just thinking to myself, you know, after you go, there's nothing. There's no one there for you. No, no mother, no father, no brother, no sister, except for your deeds. Even your money is not going to be there for you. The only thing that's going to be there for you is a salah. And that's the only thing that's going to help you gradually through your, through your time in the grave to get to the ultimate destination. As the reality of death further sinks in, Ali spends most of his personal time in preparing himself for his final meeting with his Creator, Allah. The Prophet of Allah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, He who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. He who hates to meet Allah, Allah hates to meet him. Are you loving to meet Allah? Because of this cancer, I've been advised by one of the brothers to take a special drug to help me with pain and stuff. SubhanAllah, it's very strong. I took a bit too much and I came into a, a whole different world within not knowing where I was. Very hard for me. SubhanAllah, I actually seen things I've never seen before and my family were there all standing around me and I was pointing up and I was saying and he, Ya Allah take 
and it, it was that beautiful what I was seeing. I just wanted to go. And the next day, subhanAllah, I woke up and I was upset that Allah didn't take me. As you all know, Alhamdulillah passed away. I just wanted to make a little video clip for all of the followers that have supported me from day one and come on this journey with me since day one. May Allah reward all you guys and inshallah you continue to support me and MATW inshallah. One of the first things is um, a little piece of advice to the brothers and sisters. <coughs> As you see in this life we had the cars, we had the money, we had everything alhamdulillah. But subhanAllah, a lot of people during the period of when I was sick, they'll send me messages, brother, you guaranteed paradise, brother, you. <coughs> Uh, brother, you've done so much for the community, for the Ummah. It's part of this. That is, it's not worth just a simple blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Like waking up in the morning and being able to walk to the bathroom by yourself. So these things slowly got stripped, stripped away from me. And during the last of my, my life, alhamdulillah, well, like some of us don't get that chance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know when we're going to pass away. Some of us and a lot of us just pass away suddenly. We've heard many stories where brothers and sisters have died in clubs or overdosed, whatever it is, subhanAllah. So during <coughs> your life brothers and sisters, just try to have a goal, try to have a plan, try to have a project that you work towards. Even if it's not you personally doing it and you're funding someone else's projects, just do something because Allah you're gonna need it on the day of judgment. And for the brothers and sisters that are chasing this life, well, my advice to you guys is this life is becoming yeah. Before we used to say five years ago, ten years ago, certain things were happening. Now it's every month things are changing. And we are following our desires more than we're following Islam these days. We just got to be careful because well, that's not a joke anymore. Our kids are getting affected. Everyone's getting affected. The life sometimes I used to just sit on my bed and cry because I, like, I just wanted that support from people. And, and then subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings you people that you've never thought they'll be a part of your life or friends or you didn't even know they existed. When I used to travel, I used to meet certain people. A lot of them actually went out of their way to come all the way from Dubai or the UK or wherever it was to come to actually visit me when I was sick or in the hospital. Or that's, that's love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No photos, no nothing like that. Just come to visit. 14 hour uh, flight just to see if I'm okay, subhanAllah. So, so, for the people that are out there that are sick, or worried, or stressed, so when I say to you people, don't worry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send you people that you never expected if you really need someone. You just have to have trust at the one calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, a little advice for for everyone out there, inshallah, if you can inspire one, two, three people to do something. Remember when you're in that grave, inshallah, 
that you'll be getting rewarded for everything they've done for all the people they've um, brought to Islam. And, um, Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, inshallah, if I've ever done anything to harm anyone, may Allah forgive me, inshallah. I don't think I'll be here for much longer. Alhamdulillah, woken up. My mouth is bleeding. And I think it's the last stage for me. I love you for the sake of Allah. Please, brothers and sisters, if I've done anything to hurt anyone, to forgive me.